Depression is the ultimate motivation. Oh, so you're depressed. Okay, that, so you come along to me and you tell me you're depressed. I expect to see a huge list of what you're achieving per day. You're unhappy with your life, but you're depressed. I don't expect you to be popping pills and sitting and laying in bed. I expect you to give me a huge list of everything you're achieving per day. Depression's a fantastic motivation. You know, but people are told the opposite. No, you should feel depressed. That's wrong. You should be happy anyway. Take the pills. Stay home. Take some time off. Complete garbage. You're depressed. Okay, get up. Go for a run. Lift more weights. Make more money. Get a second job. Get more girls. Like you, you can outrun depression. I said this to one guy who was coming to me. That's a great quote right there. You can outrun you depression. Can outrun. You ain't got time to be sad. Right. If you're getting where you need to get. You ain't got time for that. You can outrun it. If yes. you start working the jobs you need to do and you're training and you're seeing three or four different girls and you're trying to start your business on the side, you have no time to sit around moping. So right. outrun it. And before you know it, you'll wake up one day and you look at your life and go, wow. What's up, Get Fit Fam? What's up, Authentic Fam? What's up, do YouTube Fam? So we're going to do a quick request video. It's going to be a response video to the dude Wheat Waffles. So a lot of guys have been asking me what I think about Wheat Waffles and I don't know what particular video here and there. But finally, somebody actually sent a contribution with said request. So now I can actually entertain it. Uh, so the main thing about this response video is that I'm going to try to keep it and make it as educational, motivational and inspirational as possible because the space is just full of a bunch of people profiting off of the despair and the desperation and the laziness and the hopelessness of modern men. Anytime you get a large demographic. You're going to find people that are going to try to profit off of that demographic and exploit that demographic. And they're not always going to provide a sound product or service. I mean, the best example I could keep giving of that is the, um, the weight loss industry. It's like, oh, there's a bunch of people obese in this area. OK, well, this we're going to market, you know, our product in this area and this service in this area. And more times than not, that product is going to be garbage it's going to be trash it's going to be all marketing and um you know a subpar actual product but the marketing is what's going to push through get the sales increase the revenue and get the return so really what they're selling is the marketing they're flipping the marketing they're not flipping the actual product and, and a lot of times that's easy to see because they'll pay more for the marketing than the product all right guys so we could be talking about some type of weight loss drink or pill or whatever but it's that they're selling you something to, to avoid the work to get the results, but for some reason people never get the results. But by the time you figure that out, you already bought the product, they've sold 50,000 units of it, and they're rich now. This is happening on YouTube, all right? And it's um, irritating for me to see because I don't hate on nobody's money. I don't watch nobody's pockets, which is why I don't make content calling out and exposing all these content creators. But it still is what it is, all right? Even the podcast that I used to be with that I you know, I can't you know mention anymore, that was one of the things that made me most uncomfortable about being there, besides the fact that they were fake um, and not actually about anything that they were promoting or talking about. They didn't experience any of this stuff either, but that they were directly and intentionally exploiting the masses of depressed, weak ass men out there. And that's the truth. These dudes are weak. Now, if you fall in that category, that's fine. I'm not uh, berating you or dissing you or, or trying to insult you. I'm calling a spade a spade and then saying this is what we can do to improve the situation and make it better. So shout out to Tate because that's what Tate pretty much stands for and represents. That's why I personally like him so much because he's a person that's saying, listen, I don't have any of these problems, but I see it. I recognize it, you know, and I feel I feel for men on on mass on whole and I want them to be better. And he's coming from a background of constantly being pushed to be better in whatever the hell it is that he does. A lot of athletes will have that in common. And a lot of guys that were raised by strong fathers or just men in general, whether it be their coaches, their uncles or whatever, that's what men do. That's how men push and inspire younger boys by saying, get up, try harder. Let's do it again. We're going to get it right. We're going to get better. All right. So I'm going to Go ahead and kind of like just play this shit side by side and I'm going to respond to this particular video because uh, the request is kind of open ended. And as far as what content of Wheat Waffles he wanted me to respond to, and um, I actually stumbled upon this out of many and just said, OK, this one is perfect because in this particular video, he's literally proving my point without even knowing it. 
um, and what I represent and the message that I'm championing. So real quick, Wheat Waffles doing face ratings is what inspired me to do the body ratings. And this is why, because with Wheat Waffles, I agree with uh, all of his information, so to speak, in the sense of what the situation is, the data, the statistics, the situation, all of that. I agree with all of that. The problem that I have with him, or I don't call it a problem, it's just where we disagree, where I don't disagree with him is his message and his conclusion and what he's encouraging guys to do. So for me, he falls into the category of content creators that are making a profit off of providing some type of excuse or justification for men's shortcomings, failure, and underperformance. So if I had to summarize it, his message is like, yo, you're a five, it's not your fault. <laughs> you're a sub five, so don't even try. I'm sorry, but in my interpretation, that's pretty much what we thought Waffle's message is. And I didn't like listen to a couple of his videos because people ask me what I think. I've been listening to Wheat Waffles before I had a channel. So it's not like I'm aware, I'm not aware of these content creators and their content. I've been watching and listening to this content for years, pretty much as long as it's been around. It's just that I don't have to agree with someone's ultimate conclusion in order to consume their, their, their content. Because like I said, the way that him and say, what's this other guy's name, Andrew uh, Grace or whatever, guys like that, Kevin Ray Wilder, I agree with the way that they see things, um, what they notice, you know, how they logic it and reason it. What I don't agree with is how these guys choose to tell guys to deal with these realities. All right. Wheat Waffles probably being the main one because his whole goddamn message is everything is about looks and it's, you know, the looks that you were born with is what he's talking about. So in other words, if you just weren't born this fit, handsome guy, then just give up when it comes to women um, and just accept whatever it is that you can get with ease, uh, avoiding rejection. But don't ever apply yourself. Don't take any risk. And for God's sakes, don't actually work on yourself to improve um, what it is that women see when they look at you. All right. So that's pretty much how, how I feel about the whole Wheat Waffles channel. You know, God bless him. He's making plenty of money doing face ratings as well as his uh, ad set and whatever his channel is generating. So, you know, awesome that he's generating money. I'm sure he can get good looking girls now, right? Is he confident enough to get good looking girls now? Well, I'm sorry. Not everybody's going to be able to wait until they make a fortune before they have the nuts to say hi to a pretty fucking girl. All right, so I don't agree with that message. I don't want guys to just sit it out on the bench like a loser. I want guys to get in the game. So I'm gonna go over this video and I'm gonna point out how he comes to the opposite conclusion that I would come to based on the very same facts that he's presenting. All right, so without further ado, let me hit play on this bad boy and we can get started. You wanna hear a story for a second? Yes. I was literally practicing my skills all day just so I can come over and say hi to you. Hi. That's it? Yeah, what's up? Oh, no, I'm not talking, I'm sorry. You're not allowed to. Yeah. You're on the phone. Well, why, before, yeah, before, it. okay, well, I'll transition to this lady. You, yeah, you wouldn't believe what just happened. You want to hear a story for a second? Yes. I was literally practicing my skills all day just so I can come over and say hi to you. Hi. <laughs> That's it? Yeah, what's up? Oh, no, I'm not talking, I'm sorry. You're not allowed to. No. You're on the phone. Well, why, before, yeah, before, it. okay, well, I'll transition to this lady. You, yeah, you wouldn't believe what just happened. Just, she rejected me. It's really sad. Can you believe that? Uh, okay. First thing, right off the top. The way he's presenting this is as to say that, look at this guy's results with cold approaching. Oh, see? Cold approaching is a waste of time. Because of the way the guy looked, he had no shot in the world. Okay. Time out. First of all, the, games, the, the game that the guy kicked, his game was garbage. It was trash. How old are you? You're going to go up to a stranger and say, hey, um, you want to hear a story? Want to hear a story real quick? You got time for a story? And then the chick actually said, okay, and made time to hear this story. And the story was trash. It was a waste of her time. But she still was polite enough to say, all right, I'll let you shoot your shot. All right? And he threw up a damn brick. Now, as a grown-ass man, would you want another grown-ass man to come over to you and waste your fucking time like that? Hey, uh, hey, guy, can I tell you a story? You got time for a story? And then waste your damn time? So it's not even about him trying to pick the chick up. It's just that you're wasting a stranger's time and then now saying that cold approaching is a waste of time because it didn't work out for you. Memorize this off by heart, guys. If you approach women as a sub-five like either of these, they'll run away from you. 
If you're a normie, they'll tolerate your presence for maybe five minutes before giving you a soft rejection, like, sorry, I have a boyfriend. And if you're a chad, they'll feel flattered you've approached them and they'll gladly give you their number. In this video, I'm going to be giving you three reasons why cold approach, pickup art, day game, or whatever you want to call it, is mostly a waste of time strategy for any average or below average guys. And though it's not anywhere nearly as bad as online dating or nightclub approaching as covered in the last two episodes, in my opinion, it still makes the top three for worst possible approaching strategies. All right, so I agree with him that one, two, three uh, does make it tough to approach women. Here's the thing though, approaching women was never supposed to be easy. For even the best looking guys, it's not necessarily easy. Um, and if it is somewhat easier, it's not because they're such great looking guys. It's because they have experience with it, they built up confidence with it, and they're not going over there saying goofy shit. Okay? Because even good looking guys, they gotta say something when they get over to the girl. They can't just go over to the girl and be like, eh? 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 Check out my jaw. Eh? 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 Check out my abs. Eh? 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 Let me get your phone number. Doesn't work like that, guys. It doesn't. Okay? And stop taking advice from, from guys who aren't never been in that position. They ain't never been in that position to successfully cold approach, but yet they're trying to tell you why it's a waste of time. Nothing is a waste of time for the people that get results with it. So let them tell you what it requires and what it entails, and then you can figure out whether or not you'll ever be able to have that formula of those ingredients. But you can't take a loser's advice on why playing a particular game is a waste of time because they've never won that game. Number one, you need to be good looking for cold approach to be effective. This study that Alexander Grace introduced me to shows how important looks are when hitting on girls you don't know. Let's just go to the, the three examples that he gave. Now, online dating is not a, 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 a bad way to approach. It's not the worst way or whatever, whatever. It yields the least re results because it has the most competition on it because everybody and their mother has an account online. So all it is is that the competition is the most online. It's not that it's a waste of time. Because for the people that are at the top of the competition, it's actually very, very useful and very, very successful. And for them, it's the best way to go and the least time consuming. So if you have the ingredients that it takes to attract women, online is the best for you. It yields the most results. Because you might get rejected 80% of the time online, but the 20% of the time that it goes well is still far more than what it would have been in person. If I have to go up to every chick that I that I possibly am gonna be able to meet, how many girls can I physically go up to in real life? So yeah, that might be more successful. I might benefit more off of that, percentage-wise, but I was able to approach less women in that time. And if I could just sit home and go like this on Tinder or on Instagram, I, I can get through to more women in that time frame. So a smaller percentage of them responding is still gonna be more than a higher percentage of women in person. And now the whole uh, nightclub thing, this is something I've been talking about with guys since before there was a social media and before there was a Tinder and all this other stuff. And we had to talk to girls in person, whether it be at the supermarket, in the parking lot of McDonald's, the mall, or at a party or a nightclub. Now, I'd say a house party or something, everybody there knows somebody. You can't be at a house party if you don't know somebody. How the hell did you get invited? So it's a tighter knit community there's um, less degrees of separation. So you might know, not know the girl, but she knows somebody that knows somebody that you know. So I guess that would be a warmer approach. Um, but as far as nightclubs and parties where everyone's a stranger, you got to do what you got to do. That also comes with experience, being comfortable with it, being confident, and then having the visual attributes that would give you a shot. So yes, you can't control your height, but you can control your outfit, you can control what shape you're in, you can control your haircut, you can control how well-groomed you are, you can control how you smell, and you can control what comes out your mouth when you approach these females, and you can control your whole energy and aura. Are you just in the club constantly going up to people, going up in girls' faces? Hey, how are you? What's up, beautiful? How you doing? Or you're just at the nightclub having a good time in general, being social in general, talking to guys and girls in general, meeting people. That's how you get better results talking to women in a nightclub atmosphere. You don't just keep beelining to girls unprepared, dressed like a goofball, in terrible shape, saying, hey, how are you? What's your name? Oh, are you creeped out? Are you walking away from me? 
Oh, okay, I guess cold approaching doesn't work in the nightclub. I knew it. Wheat Waffles was right. Get your shit together, guys. All right, get your shit together, okay? And give it a solid approach with all these things checked off first. And if it still doesn't work for you, then you could sit here and give up and say, oh, it's a waste of time. It doesn't work. I mean, I was dressed to the T. I was smelling great with the best cologne. I, my, my beard was groomed. I had the beard oil. I've been working out. I was in great shape. I had the six pack. I had the wide shoulders, but <laughs> just didn't work. In contrast, when looking at cold approach, there's only two variables of SMV that will determine a man's success. One, looks, which is comprised primarily of face, body, and height. And two, your game slash social skills. I'd say around 70% of it is your looks and the remaining 30% is your game. You need to be good looking for cold approach to be effective. This study that Alexander Grace introduced me to shows how important looks are when hitting on girls you don't know. But if we were to draw a graph, all right, so now he's about to drown us with more data and all this other kind of stuff, which really is just a means of justifying why you're failing and underachieving. I was looking for a really cool clip from Andrew Tate that I couldn't find with him talking about why he said depression isn't real to him. And he's talked about it several times. So just this particular clip, he, he said something that I think pertains to this very same, this, this, um, this uh, mode of conduct that, that these guys have, which is trying to over explain everything. He said, there was this guy that I used to fight. He was like the number two guy in UK in kickboxing. And he said, it wasn't until this guy started studying the human body and understanding all of this technical stuff that now when he would get hurt, he would be like, oh, I tore my meniscus, ascus, elecline, incline, tenja. And it's like, dude, when you used to get hurt before, you would just get hurt and then get on with it. He was like, now that you know all of this stuff, you know what I'm saying, so specifically, you're over here overanalyzing it, and it's just making you a punk. It's just making you not take risk, not want to fight anymore, and, you're, and you're, you're avoiding getting hit in that area, so you're not performing as well, because you're more worried about not getting hurt than you are inflicting pain on the other fighter. I feel like that's the exact same thing that Wheat Waffles does. Reason number two, and this is somewhat related to the first point. After online dating, cold approach has the lowest rate of return. In my opinion, if you're not at least a six or above in SMV, I wouldn't even bother with cold approach. The rate of return is just too low. And don't let where the line is drawn deceive you. Six or above is the top 25% of men. Most guys are a five or below. If you try approaching as a four or five, it's like trying to cut down a tree, but with a kitchen knife. And if you try approaching as a three, it's like using a toothbrush. Over analyzing why guys aren't successful at, 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 at pickup or successful at cold approaching, it's like, bro, stop. Because all that's doing is making guys give up completely. And a large percent of those guys just giving up actually have potential. They have potential to improve the situation, improve their results. I'm not saying they're going to start dating eight, nine, and ten straight models all of a sudden. What I'm saying is they're going to get from no buns to some buns. They're going to get from women that are far below average to women that are average or slightly above average. But if they give up, they're never going to figure out how much improvement they actually have the potential to make. So stop preaching weakness. It's often said that as a man on online dating, you're just another guy in her inbox among hundreds of others. Well, I think a similar thing is to be said about cold approach, but just to a lesser degree. You're likely just one of dozens of others who's approached her in the previous months. Now, obviously, to be one of dozens is a lot better than being one of hundreds, but it's still not that much better. Cold approaching a woman is in essence a sales pitch of yourself. You have five minutes to show why you're deserving of a woman's time to see her again. However, the problem is, is it's way too easy for a woman to forget about you once you're gone. Because she knows it's only a matter of time until another guy shoots his shot. Time out. Let's take a break from someone that underachieves with women and listen to the words of someone who overachieves with women. If you want to do better with women, it makes sense that you take advice for someone that's doing the best with women. Let's get some words on cold approaching from the top G himself. So you go up to someone on the beach. The first thing you need to do is you need to get their attention. What a lot of dudes will do is they'll come up, they'll start talking when you're half paying attention. Mm -hmm. And by the time you're like, turn around, you'll go, what? And that's the worst possible reply. You don't even know what the fuck was been said. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you do is get their attention. Me okay. personally, I'm a big dude. So I have to get their attention in a very calm, slow, cool way. So I'm like, excuse me, excuse me. Very like, don't be worried. I'm not going to attack you. Once, once, you, once you have their attention, 
what I personally say, and I know this is cliche, everyone's expecting some amazing line, but it's really not a line. I want to make my intention <laughs> clear from the beginning. So I, excuse me, excuse me. I just want to say you are absolutely beautiful. And I say it and I look them in the eyes. I'm not a bitch. I will look you directly in the eyes when I tell you you're beautiful. I'm not, no, I'm not a punk. I'm not afraid of nobody. I make my intention clear. The reason I say that it's because 99% of the time, unless the girl's a fucking cunt as a person, the only thing she can really say is thank you. Period. She has to say something positive, right? So we've started. Let's look at this from a human psychology perspective. Now I'm a, I'm a stranger, but the first interaction is positive. That's True right. or false, right? False. So I've come over and said, you're absolutely beautiful. And she says, thank you. I said, you're welcome. I just want to come and tell you that. I'm sure you hear it all the time. And I was wondering if I could have your Instagram. The reason I asked for an Instagram it's because it's a far less personal than a phone number. If you ask for a phone number, very few people have her phone number. Mm. But every random motherfucker already follows her on Instagram. Mm. So okay. why would she say no? I know y'all hate when I interrupt Top G. But real quick, just to confirm that I'm on the same wavelength as Andrew when it comes to talking to women, especially cold approaching. How many times in my previous content have I said, yo... It don't even got to be that stressful, that much pressure on you, bro. Say hi to the chick, get her to smile, compliment her right quick, and get the IG. In fact, me personally, I've said and shown you in plenty of content that I just walk up to chicks and hand them my damn phone on the search page for Instagram. And they figure it out. They see that and they say, oh, obviously he's saying that he wants my Instagram. And they look at me, you know, this handsome mug and these boldest shoulders, and they put their damn IG in there. And if they're interested, for sure, my way of confirming is I simply see if they go through the trouble of adding me immediately. If they follow me back immediately, like Andrew said, it's in the bag. Exactly. So she gives it to you. And this is human psychology. She's already said thank you. It's already positive. Now she's giving you her Insta, which everyone else has. <laughs> and after she gives me her Insta, this is the true test. Mm, okay. Gentlemen, pay attention. Period. I'll say thank you for that. My name is Andrew Tate. And I'll shake her hand. And I will delay for two seconds. And the reason I will delay is this. If she says, okay, then she ain't interested. If she goes, okay, what's your name? No, mm. I ask when she tells me her name back, this is the this is the skill to the game. I'll say. Let me, let me flip it around, right? I take her Instagram. I say, what's your name? Let's say she says, Jade. I'm a <laughs> Eurocentric bubba. No, I'm just... <laughs> Jade. I'll say, it's nice to meet you, Jade. Jade. I'll shake her hand. And I'll wait two seconds. If she says, what's your name? She's on it. If she wants to know my name back, it's done. Game over. 100% in the bag. If she says, my name's Jade, and shakes my hand, I wait two seconds, she doesn't say shit. She ain't really on it, which tells me a lot about how I need to play the Insta game because now I got her Insta, right? <laughs> so I'll say, so what's your name? She'll say, Jade. All right, cool. Shake hands. Boom. We shake hands. And she said, and yours? Then I know it's in the back. If you want to know my name, it's over. That's the basic psychology of approaching a girl. Make sure it's a positive interaction. Make sure you're confident. Look her in the eyes. Calm, slow, smooth. Make sure it starts out happy. Ask for an Instagram because phone numbers are too personal. Mm -hmm. And then ask her name. Agreed. If she asks your name back, it's on. If she doesn't, you can still message her on Insta, but you have to understand she really ain't that into you. That is the psychology of approaching a girl on the beach. I if agree. you think I'm wrong, Ma'am. tell me I'm wrong. But that's she how I would. More words of encouragement from Andrew Tate, Top G himself. In my opinion, the most motivational person in this generation on social media is just a way to reach millions of people all at the same damn time. But in this generation, he has to be probably the most motivational, inspirational uh, character person, uh, personality right now when it comes to addressing men all right, and giving them that extra push. But I want to be clear that advice that he just gave on cold approach, contrary to everything Wheat Waffles is saying, also has nothing to do with him as an individual. He's not talking about being rich, handsome, good looking, tall or whatever. He was talking about the basic psychology of interactions between human beings. Basic. You understand what I'm saying? Meaning that it will work for everyone. He literally gave you one size fit all 
advice on cold approaching. Never heard better advice on cold approaching, I must say. My advice is pretty damn good when it comes to cold approach, but damn, that's that's probably the best and most concise advice. And he gave you a he gave you a straight up play by play, you know what I'm saying, strategy that would work pretty much on every female. And the beauty of what he explained is that even if the girl isn't feeling you, he took the rejection out of it for you. For all you dudes that's so afraid of getting rejected, he took that risk out of it for you. Shout out to the top G. I mean, damn. And one more thing that I would like to add is that prior to this recent, you know what I'm saying, viral, you know, um, moment that, that, that um, Andrew Tate is having, women did not know who Andrew Tate was. And I know this firsthand and for a fact, because a year ago, year and a half ago, I was doing all of the booking for the female guests for that podcast that he was going on. Right. Which is the first time y'all seen him interact with women. So, so stop it. So stop it. OK, now booking all those guests and all the females that he was interacting with. None of those girls knew who he was. I was sending those girls his pictures, his Instagram saying, hey, this millionaire is going to be on, on the show. You know, he's a, he's a he's a, a three time kickboxing champion or maybe was it maybe four times. Sorry, Andrew, if it's four time um, kickboxing champion. And not one female knew who he was. Not one female recognized Andrew. Not one out of dozens and dozens and dozens. They don't get to know who he was until he already bagged them up, until he already hollered, until he already a cold approach. So other than that, he's just a tall, light-skinned dude that's confident. Women did not know how much money he had or how much money he was worth. Yeah, now women know who Andrew Tate is. Yeah, because for the last however months, he's been all over the damn place. He's been super viral. But in any event... The advice he gave you is sound. It would work for guys 5'5". Five, five. It would work for guys that are 6'5". It would work for guys that are a 5. It would work for guys that are a 9.5. Okay? Stop making excuses, guys. This explains why the flake rate is so high in cold approach and it only gets worse the less attractive you are. Out of all the guys that approach a woman in a given month, unless you're the most attractive guy, it'll be too easy for her to disregard all the lackluster options and try focus on just the best one. It's well regarded in the cold approach community that getting a girl's phone number nowadays means almost nothing. And that's because it's always easier for a woman to give out her number freely and then flake on the text later instead of having to reject the man on the spot. You know how you play with chicks? How? All you fuckers are nosy. <laughs> and if I give you something Could like agree. that, we a are. little drop like that, like, ah, I'll tell you later on Instagram. You're gonna be like, what? We're... But you'll be curious enough to at least find the message. Like, what the fuck? This motherfucker's talking shit. Let me look. What it, what it, because you're all nosy. Yes. Now, yes. We're, now we're a stage further. Period. Now you read the DM. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's the game as a man. You need to, you need to slowly play it. And, and, this, and I'm saying this not because, I mean, I shouldn't say this kind of thing to girls. But I'm saying to all the guys watching. You need to involve. The biggest mistake men make is they don't involve any mystery in their game. They're so busy trying to brag. They remove the mystery from the game. If I say to a girl, listen, I'm going to tell, I've told you my name is Andrew, but it's not actually my name. My name is actually Emery. And I'm going to explain to you on Instagram. If I say that to a girl, they're like, what? Well, who are you? But, uh, okay. Well, look, look, what the fuck this? But it's the curiosity. Correct. You, right. it's the curious, have you ever said to a chick, I want to tell you something. I'll tell you later. That's they can't true. stand it. Yeah, they can't stand it. They can't stand it. <laughs> This ties in nicely with my next and final point on why you shouldn't cold approach, which is that cold approach has the biggest effects on your self-esteem compared to any other form of approaching. And this is partially because of what I've just described. When a woman gives out her number to avoid rejecting a man, it temporarily gives him a false sense of hope. I've seen so many guys online tell stories about how they had a daytime interaction with a girl they thought couldn't have gone any better. My game was perfect that day, they might say. However, when things progress to text, for whatever reason, the woman's interest suddenly drops off a cliff. Maybe, mate, the reason why the woman's interest suddenly dropped off of the cliff is because your texting game is rubbish, mate. It's straight garbage. Whatever you're talking about is not interesting and she doesn't want to hear it, mate. I mean, <laughs> for all of you guys that subscribe to Wheat Waffles, I'm subscribed to his channel. If you're active on Wheat Waffles channel, why don't you get in the comments and tell them, Debate Allende from Authentic Alphas. It would do wonders for my channel for me to demolish him, okay, in a debate. Because this is all like basic rudimentary shit to understand. 
the analysis and the advice that he's giving you is off. It's off, right? What, what brings him to that conclusion is accurate. It's sound. But that conclusion is terrible. So it's, it's kind of like chicks. You know, the same women that you guys call delusion and all of that? The women would sit here and be like, why is it that all these men my age, they're, they're messing with these little girls. So they're robbing the cradle. It's like, no. Men are attracted to youthful, beautiful women that haven't already lived their damn life out. They haven't already lived their youth and passed their prime. It's not that they're robbing cradles. It doesn't matter how old guys are. They tend to be pretty much attracted to the same age racket, same group of same age of women. I was just watching um, House of Dragons and the dude was older, his wife died, and the realm, right, is expecting him to remarry. But do you think the dude's gonna remarry a woman the age of his, his wife that died? No, he's looking to remarry. Well, the first chick they passed to him was, uh, was uh, 12, and that's just them normalizing pedophilia. Yeah, I get it, back in ancient times or whatever men married extremely young girls, whatever. But the point is, in this modern society, that's some normalizing pedophilia. I'm going off topic. But the point is that all the the females that were suitable for him to remarry were all significantly younger than him. And the chick that he did decide to marry was his daughter's age because it was his daughter's best friend. Anyhow, it's not a secret that men will get divorced in their late 30s, mid 40s or whatever, and then they'll remarry a woman significantly younger than their ex-wife. So women trying to come up with some other explanation, some other conclusion, <laughs> yeah, what, what got them to that conclusion is accurate. Yes, you have accurately noticed that men your age are interested in younger women, but your reasoning for why is off or, or how you should handle it is off. And it's the same thing with this dude right here saying that, yeah, it, it, even when the cold approach goes well and you get the number, then what's going to happen is that the woman's interest is going to fall off a cliff and she's going to stop texting you and ghost you. Uh, not if your texting is interesting. So that, that's the conclusion you should come to is, yes, guys, there's more work to do. There's more work to do. You get your physical together, right? You get your outfit together, fashion sense. You get your fragrances together, learn how to pick your fragrances, that matters to women. Get your fingernails clean and all that type of stuff. Get your beard groomed and all of that. Yeah, I know it's a lot of work, right? Pick the right shoes, cold approach, say the right thing, make the right impact on the girl, right? Compliment her, get her to laugh, get her to smile, get her social media, get her phone number. And guess what, guys? When you go to text her, there's more work. There's more strategy, there's more finesse, there's more skill. Yeah, I know. And then get, check this part. When you actually get to go out with her, and then you actually say the right things and set the right mood, make her comfortable, comfortable. Enough to go back to your place, or the hotel, or her place, or the backseat of the car, or the beach, or wherever you get her alone. Mm, get a little romantic music playing, yeah, yeah. And it's about to go down, guess what? You gotta know how to hit it too. You gotta know how to please her too. You got to know how to bring her to orgasm too, don't you say? Yeah, more work, more skill, more finesse, more game, right? And then after you beat it up right, guess what else you got to do? You got to know how to act post-sex. It's just so much work, isn't it, guys? But I'm here to help. Hey, it was such a great night and the pleasure is mine. Please let me know when you return to Mexico City. It will be incredible to see us again. This happens in cold approach more than in any other environments. In online interactions, if a woman's not interested, all she has to do is leave you on red or block you. Which, yes, I'll admit, can feel bad in the moments. However, I'd much prefer to be blocked by someone I've never met before from an online dating app than have my hopes inflated after what I believe to be a successful interaction, only for it to come crashing down later on when she starts being flaky over text. You're my friend, you just can't be a pussy. Well, I had a heart attack. Get the fuck up. What's wrong with you? Go to hospital later. Have a drink. Cigarette. Cup of coffee. Back in the game. As for warm approach, the quantity of rejections is already low as you're not going to be spamming repetitions like you would in cold approach. One rejection is already a lot better than 50. But furthermore, if you warm approach the correct way, you can minimize the risk of rejection to almost zero. There's so many things that he's missing in this, you know, analysis, trying to overanalyze this and be so-called logic, as he says. 
But of course, this is coming from someone that has very little actual experience with women. Now, when you're over here trying to supposedly befriend your way into a relationship with a woman that's supposedly a couple of notches higher than you in attractiveness, he's not mentioning all the liabilities in this. Number one, glaring um, uh, liability is that it's going to be a waste of time if she doesn't somehow magically let allow you to win her over with this soft approach. This approach is time consuming than a mug. Okay, that's number one. Number two, you can't say, but it's the long game, Allende. No, long game means that you're in control of the strategy. You're not in control with this, with this strategy. The female's in control. The best and most common way, in my opinion, I see guys succeeding in warm approach is by first waiting for a girl to give clear choosing signals. This could be her deliberately laughing at bad jokes, or she repeatedly replies to a man's story with flirtatious remarks. Anyway, after this first step, if either of these two things happen, at this point, it then makes it a no-brainer for the man to shoot his shot. She can take all of that friendship and all that warmness and just be like, what are you talking about? We're just friends. When you finally think that those are choosing signals that you're interpreting, you're really not. She's just being nice because you're being nice and, you know, you're friends. And then when you go to get some, some coffee and you're thinking that's your first date, she's going to be like, yeah, oh, I got to get out of here. I actually have a date. And you're going to be like, oh, wait, I thought we were on a date. Yeah. That's what this slow poke, soft, risk-free, safety net, warm approach shit is going to get you. It's going to get you looking stupid when, when it dawns on you that she's still not attracted to you. She's still not attracted to you. Okay? Now, that's like the worst case scenario. The middle case scenario is that you do kind of sort of get this girl or you think you got her because she's like, all right. I guess I'll let you kind of be my boyfriend a little bit for a little while. Okay. And while she's taking her sweet time to get affectionate with you, physical with you, sexual with you, there's some other guy that is going to be a Chad Chadinston that's going to smash her. And then you're going to be hurt. And then she's going to feel bad because she hurt her friend's feelings or this nice guy who didn't deserve that. But her pussy don't answer to you. All right. So that's what happens to guys that play this strategy. If you are fortunate enough to win the girl over with all this extra crap, which I keep telling guys, stop doing, stop being nice, stop buying stuff, stop, stop trying to take her out and trying to be her friend first and trying to get someone to refer you and suggest you. And I'm a really nice guy. You should go out with me sometime because I'm really nice and I've been waiting. When you try that approach, if she actually does says, all right, I guess he's a nice guy and I'm, I should give him a try because there's a lot of assholes out there that are getting the opportunity. So maybe I should let this guy get a chance. Happening with the nice guy is his entire temperament or his setting is response. Yeah. It's not lead, yep. it's response. Like yep. whatever happens is like, whatever you want, babe, whatever you want. Yeah. And in every situation, believe it or not, that makes a female feel uncomfortable. And she's not gonna start being attracted to you all of a sudden, bro. She's gonna try, but it's not gonna work. And then she's gonna end up hurting you in the long run anyway. And then you're just gonna sit there looking stupid when all that time and effort should have been spent on making yourself more attractive. Oh yeah, and by the way, cold approaching and getting experience talking to women and dealing with women and being confident with women so that she wouldn't be your only uh, option or your only, you know, uh, potential possibility. Because it's not even an option because you don't have it in the bag, right? So she's your only prospect. You're putting all your time, energy, and effort into a maybe sort of kind of possible prospect when you could be out there getting that good old-fashioned experience with women and getting that tough skin from all the times you might have sort of been rejected. Meanwhile, you're in the gym four or five times a week, building a more aesthetically pleasing physique to project to new potential women constantly. That would be the smarter route, guys. Do not listen to this pussyfoot shit and waste your damn time. Then lastly, as long as he doesn't screw up, i.e. acts normal, his chance of success should be very high. Guys. Do not listen to this pussyfoot shit and waste your damn time standing still in one position because while you're doing that, plenty of other guys are still hollering at her, okay? There's still other guys who are going to be cold approaching that girl that you tried to zero in on and put all your eggs in that basket. There are going to be other guys that are going to be hitting her up online on that Tinder account that she pretends not to have. There are going to be guys that are jumping in that DM regardless of how many followers she has. She might only have a thousand followers, two thousand followers. There's still going to be guys jumping in that DM if she looks good. So you're still dealing with the same competition that you think you're avoiding by warm approaching. Now going back to cold approach, 
The choosing signal safety net is rarely there if you want to do it effectively. Most guys who practice cold approach know it's mostly a numbers game. They're happy to get rejected 95% of the time in order to get through to that last 5% that will accept them. Now, I'm not saying you should rule out cold approach solely because of this reason, but the idea, if rejection still hurts you haven't been rejected enough, only goes so far. What I'm saying is that cold approach requires a thicker skin than any other approaching method out there. Now, he goes more and more into just proving my point as he tries to prove his own point. And in case you haven't figured it out yet, what he's saying is cold approaching is a waste of time. And what I'm saying is cold approaching is absolutely essential to being confident and successful with women. And also getting that whole, this woman is better than me and if I'm good enough, but I'm not good enough so I shouldn't even try, getting that mentality out of your head. The more and more you cold approach women is the more and more you solidify it in your brain that not only are they just simply humans, they're the female of the species. Which means they're not in competition with you. They're not in the runnings with you. They are not the arbiters of how valuable you are or how strong you are, or how good you are, or what you're capable of. Women do not come nowhere in that equation, all right? Coaches decide that. Scouts decide that. Bosses decide that. Clients decide that. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Other men that have more status, power, and, and wealth than you do is who determines whether or not you're good enough to be in that arena. Okay, so whether or not you're going to go to the NBA or the NFL or, or, or play pro tennis or whatever, that's, that's not up to any chick. There's no chick that's like, eh, I don't like his serve. He's not good enough. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you guys? If you're trying to go work for, for MIT or whatever the hell, it's not some female that's like, eh, nah, yeah, I, don't, I don't like how he programs code. So whatever the fuck it is that you're trying to do in life, bro, stop, stop allowing women to decide your value or your worth. Stop investing that much into into them in the sense of them being on this pedestal just shoot your shot and learn from the experience move on and go shoot another shot is what i'm trying to say to you now what he's saying in this about the cold approach is that you shouldn't do it because cold approaching only comes down to two variables how attractive you are which is composed of your face and your body and 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 how good your game is so you shouldn't do it wait what okay Face you're born with, and then it's what you do with that face that, that your mother and your father gave you. So you have the least control over your face, but yet you still have control over it to an extent. Now, the body, you have full control over it. It's the genetics that you were given and what you do with those genetics, how well you develop them. Okay? There's no athlete, no bodybuilder, no fitness model, no nothing that just was born with the body just like that. They had to be training, they had to be practice, they had to be conditioning. They built it to that based on the genetics that they had, the potential genetically that they had. So work is missing from that equation. The, the next thing now is the game. Uh, hello, game is just that, game. Game is learnt. No matter what game we're talking about, we're talking about chess game, we're talking about some type of athletic sport game, okay, we're talking about video games, any games you're talking about comes from like, Getting good at that game. So the game of talking to women, again, comes from practice. What the... <sighs> Guys, fucking cold approach. Work on your shit. Work on your appearance. Work on the game that comes out your mouth. Get better results. Repeat.